Guys, I'm a little excited. The day has come that uh, we will review the one and only ACC Crappy Sticks Green Series. This is the 7 foot 6 two piece spinning rod. I think we need to say a few words for ACC Crappy Sticks in general before we start this review. When it comes to crappy fishing, the name recognition of all other brands of crappy fishing rods together do not equal the name recognition of ACC Crappy Sticks, okay? These guys sponsor everybody. Every crappy fishing YouTube channel of half decent size is uh, sponsored by these guys. They all use the green rods. Uh, everybody loves them. Uh, the name recognition and the reputation of this company is just unparalleled. Uh, they do all of these, you know, tournaments for kids. They give away rods to kids. I mean, they really do have incredible reputation. They have a wonderful website, nice pictures, nice colors, very easy to shop. And uh, the demand for these rods is uh, so great that um, I rarely see them on sale. The, the only time I've seen these rods on sale was this uh, past uh, Christmas. This is when I bought mine. Uh, these rods MSRP for about $60 and they had $20 off and that's when I jumped and bought mine. And I did also make a community post uh, telling everybody about the, the sale. So maybe some of you uh, bought during the same sale as well. So needless to say, I was very excited when I got my uh, ACC Crappy Stick. The last time I remember I bought a product with similar hype was the Abu Garcia Catfish uh, Special Edition. Okay, that reel had absolutely the same praise from everybody in the catfish world. Only full 5 star reviews on um, every major website that uh, sold it. And uh, that reel was a pretty serious disappointment. Maybe because I had uh, such a huge expectations. And uh, I have a very detailed review on that reel if you're interested in it. Uh, and I'll probably leave a link to that video in the description below as well. So yeah, now this uh, Crappy Sticks rod has the same incredible praise. Everybody loves it. And uh, let's start the review and uh, see how it compares to the other crappy rods uh, on this bench. Starting from the butt of the handle, the first thing we notice is it says made in China. Now everything in America is made in China and most of these rods are made in China too. But this was a little bit of a surprise to me because I will show you later this rod does look handmade to me. I think the rod was assembled here in the United States. Just the components are Chinese, but I could be wrong. Every rod that wants to be light will have a split grip. And um, the ACC Crappy Stick is definitely very light rod, as I will show you later. And uh, they achieved partially that by having a split grip here. The quality of the cork, as you see, is nothing to brag about. It's full of filler everywhere, but like I always say, filler is not a problem. Just seal it and it's gonna look amazing. Look at all of these rods. None of them have a hole in the cork. And when I seal this one, it won't have um, holes in the cork either. I did notice kind of a crack or a gap here though that I will try to fill um, with the sealant so to use it kind of like a glue as well to make sure that even if it's sealed it doesn't just separate from the plastic. One thing that must be mentioned here and paid attention is this bulge okay over here see how it's thicker compared to here this bulge in the handle behind the reel seat. All of the other rods on the table have cylindrical uh, handles. This one has a bulge right behind the reel seat. The locking nut and washer are the same like pretty much in every other rod 
uh, in this price range. This is the Cabela's Fish Eagle. This is the Shimano Sensi Light. Exactly the same stuff because, you know, they buy the same parts, guys, and they just put them on different blanks. But what uh, is different and unique about this rod again is they put nothing on top of the nut, okay? This is the only rod that I own and that I have seen that has nothing on top of the nut, okay? If you look at the Shimano Sensi Light, look how similar they are, okay? Very, very similar, but the Shimano put a little piece of foam here on top to support your hand on the other side of the reel. Now look what happens when you put a reel, and this is my normal holding position, two fingers on top, two fingers uh, under the reel seat, and this is the only good grip where I can grab the line from exactly the line roller over here. So look, now we have the bulge right where I'm holding the right where the back of my palm is. Now I have a bulge where it's really thick. And on the front, I have nothing. So I'm holding the thread. So now you have a big difference in diameter of one side in my palm on the back and very thin on the front, okay? So this creates a unique grip to say the least. I mean, all of these rods are, you know, have varying degrees of comfort and they are all all right. And some of them are more comfortable than the others, but they are all all right. This grip here, okay, takes some getting used to, to say the least, okay. I'm not even used to this grip. I don't know how I can hold this all day, okay. I really wish they put something here and I really wish this bulge is, is just this bulge is just as bad for the grip as not having anything here. If it was just a normal cylinder, the only way for me to hold this rod comfortable is holding it over here, okay, and put the bulge in the middle of my palm. But then I can no longer grab the line, okay, because my index finger is too far from the line roller. So I cannot hold the line anymore. So yeah, beware, this rod does have a unique grip that uh, will take some getting used to. We have a little uh, hook keeper here, as we have on uh, every other rod here, regardless of the price. And then we get to the model of the rod, where we find another unique thing about this rod. This is the model, by the way. So you have model on one side and you have the ACC crappy stick logo on the other side and that's it, okay? There is nothing else on the blank. But look at every other rod has the specifications. Is it ultralight? Uh, how long is it? Does it support lure from whatever, 132nd to 18th? This is the Shakespeare. This is the Shimano, uh, this is the Daiwa. I mean, all of them have the specs, uh, but this rod doesn't have specs on it, okay? It just says it has a model and you don't know what is the perfect lure weight uh, for this rod. And this is one of the reasons why I think this rod was handmade and not the whole thing was manufactured in China. Because if it was, they would print these statistics here, okay, about the rod. But when people, you know, hand make this, they just put the model and they, whatever, clear code it on top. And they can't bother with, you know, every different rod, putting all of the specifications. So yeah, this rod, this is why I told you uh, when I saw the label that I think this rod was assembled here but this is just a speculation um, I will never know moving on to the guides this is the first guide here the same thing that I said about the guides um, on the Shakespeare rod this rod has the exact same guides 
as on the Shakespeare micro series, you know, Fish Eagle. I mean, this is a very popular guide because it's very cheap. And at the same time for these, you know, ultralight or whatever they are, crappy rods, you don't really need uh, much more than that. And because these guides are very thin, they also weigh very little. I mean, they're not as good as the Minima guides here on the Daiwa Presso, but nothing is as good. The Minima guides are, to me, the, the best guide there is for ultralight fishing rod. Oh, by the way, the diameter on the crappy stick, I don't know if I can show you from this angle, is a little bit smaller than the other ones, which I prefer slightly larger first guide, because this is where all the noise comes from, from the coils, from the spool uh, of the reel. But I think it, it is sufficient and it does reduce weight. So, uh, yeah, the guides are just fine. Nine guides on the 7 foot 6. Moving on to the connections. I mean, the connection is alright. The same as in the uh, Shakespeare right next to it. I mean, it's not as nice uh, as on the Daiwa. This one, you just put it on top of the blank. And if you keep putting it on and off and on and off, the paint or the clear coat will uh, wear out. So, to sum up the bench over here, if we leave the blank aside, I didn't see any nice components on this rod. You know, it's a little bit disappointing. I mean, again, we have the same cork uh, as on the Shakespeare rod, for example. We have the exact same guides as on the Shakespeare rod. Uh, this handle here, I mean, that will be a challenge to get used to. Why no piece on top? I mean, I like the, the Shakespeare rod much better. It, it is just much more comfortable to hold uh, than the ACC crappy stick. And it is made in China. And the color of the blank definitely stands out. But this also, I mean, it, it does, uh, I've heard other YouTubers mention it. It does uh, require some getting used to. I'm usually a fan of not so bright colors. So, uh, so far guys, I gotta tell you, I'm not impressed, but we haven't seen the blank yet and the blank is uh, something else, uh, I promise you. So, let's take a look at that next. When you land on the homepage of Crappy Sticks, the first thing that you will read is that it says, if you are tired of uh, flimsy, wimpy rods that easily break and have a dull feeling, this is the solution. And um, I can confirm with you uh, that uh, this description is 100% uh, correct, okay? The other thing that the description says is that these rods are extremely sensitive and light. Now, I don't know if they are extremely sensitive. They have the regular stainless steel guides that uh, any other rod has. But they sure are light. You know, I got some numbers here because I weighed all of my rods. Uh, to see how light uh, this rod really is and it sure is light guys this rod weighs only 107 grams so if i don't count the daiwa presso this would be my lightest rod by a good margin okay uh, to give you an idea uh, all the other rods are like 13 grams or whatever half an ounce uh, heavier than this uh, the Shimano Sensi Light is 100 grams, but it's only 6 foot 6, and this one is 7 foot 6. So if you put another foot of blank and guides to the Shimano, I'm sure it will be heavier to, than this one as well. The only lighter rod than this one is the Daiwa Presso. The Daiwa Presso, the 8 foot rod, weighs 93 grams, and the 7 foot weighs only 81 grams. But yeah, very light rod. Is it extremely sensitive? The blank is very stiff, as I will show you in a minute, okay? But because the blank is so thin and very stiff, the rod is indeed uh, sensitive. So I think that description is overall the most accurate description, to be honest with you, of you know any, any rod description that I've seen. Okay, let's look at the action of the blank now, okay? As I mentioned already, the blank is 
extremely stiff okay the stiffest blank as I will show you later when I load it of everything of anything on the table by a good margin and then we have these super thin guides which should make for an excellent jigging rod because the blank is stiff it is super light and the guides are thin and then this is just a recipe for a great jigging rod but you know the strange grip aside there is something about the distribution of weight that makes this rod very tip heavy and if i compare here with the shakespeare micro the shakespeare micro wobbles more but the tip feels very light and is actually easier to jig the shakespeare rod than the crappy sticks okay i think one of the reasons for that is maybe it's not because the distribution of the weight is top heavy i think it's because that this rod is seven foot six at seven foot six uh, the rod becomes a little bit too long for jigging and because of you know how leverage works the further the weight is from the center the more work it takes for that weight to be moved okay that's that's how leverage works i do have other seven foot six rods though this uh, cabela's prodigy is uh, seven foot six and uh, this one i mean it feels half the weight of the crappy stick this one is my best jigging rod okay because you can do micro you can control the motion of the tip with almost microscopic precision no other rod is even close to this rod for jigging okay the, the control of the tip is absolutely uncomparable uncomparable with anything else on the table and talk about sensitivity okay the crappy stick says it's a uh, extreme sensitivity okay it doesn't even feel I mean they, they look like they're made of totally different materials and everything this one is I don't know much more sensitive okay let's start looking at the load curves now here we have four ounces of weight okay this is the Shakespeare micro series which is rated as light keep in mind the rods on my bench some are light some are ultra light and this one here the crappy stick doesn't have a rating but look at the tip okay look how much the the Shakespeare rod is bending with four ounces and this tip is barely bending with four ounces so I'm not even going to compare it with the Daiwa Presso because you remember how much more than the Shakespeare did the Daiwa Presso uh, bend. So the rating is of this rod is uh, definitely something higher than, uh, than the category of light uh, power rods. But let's uh, put some more weight and uh, check it again. And here we have... 8 ounces as you can see with 8 ounces the rod does begin to bend but uh, if you look at the very tip of the Shakespeare rod it is almost vertically down so it kind of cannot bend anymore maybe if I raise it like this you can see the difference but by the way the the curve of the bend of this rod is absolutely amazing okay the only similar curve I have in all of my, I don't know, 58 rods is the Tiger Light spinning rod. It, it had a similarly beautiful curve, okay? Now let's put it against some more serious competition. Okay, now I'm going to compare it uh, against one of my favorite rods of all time for any kind of fishing, the Eagle Claw Crafted Glass this beauty right here which is uh, rated as medium heavy uh, for weights between half an ounce and one ounce okay so I added a little more weight uh, to get the 
blanks to bend better and right now I have uh, exactly 10 ounces on each rod you tell me which one is stiffer okay again I'm holding them as you can see exactly parallel here I mean maybe at the very tip the ACC crappy stick is a little bit stiffer but yeah man the Eagle Claw is medium heavy and you know for all practical purposes these two rods have exactly uh, the same test curves and by the way I have many videos and I'll put a few of them in the description of me catching many carp with these Eagle Claw rods I mean we have 8 to 10 pound carp here on Fox River so that's what I catch mostly and uh, yeah this uh, rod is perfect for that so uh, yeah if you get an accidental carp with the ACC crappy stick uh, when you're fishing for uh, crappy and your line is strong enough oh my god you don't uh, have to fuss around with this carp you can just horse it out of uh, cover uh, without uh, you know much work if your line is uh, strong enough so uh, yeah this ain't no flimsy wimpy blank okay guys this guy wasn't kidding if you ask me you know because the specs are missing here if you ask me what are the specs the true specs on this rod i would say it's medium power okay because the eagle claw rod is a little bit soft okay you can watch the review on that rod separately i'm gonna leave it in the description below uh, as well so the true power of this rod is medium power so everything else over there is light or ultra light this one is not light it's not medium light either this is a medium power rod and probably the best uh, weights for casting for this rod would be something at least 116 but i doubt you can cast 116 very well with this rod either because I mean the tip will not flex so the rod will not compress and cast uh, the weight for you so probably 1 8 would be the beginning of the low end of what is good to cast uh, with this rod and then on the upper end there is no limit you can cast an ounce with this rod probably uh, no problem either what else can I say about this rod before I give you my final words on it you know the company has absolutely outstanding customer support so whatever issue you have i recommend just call them and talk to them and you know you can take my word for it they will make things right however on the website it says that the rods come with six month warranty okay and then if you break the tip uh, they want to sell you only the tip but i just want to mention this to you that this is the only rod uh, here with six month uh, warranty every rod that daiwa and shimano sell come with a minimum of one year warranty the shakespeare rod has also one year warranty uh, pretty much everything has at least one year warranty and the ugly sticks have seven years warranty there are some rods with lifetime warranties so as it comes to warranty it is a little bit subpar but you know again i expect that this is compensated that the, uh, with their excellent customer service you can just call somebody on the phone and you know get uh, get help uh, try calling ugly stick okay in my final words about this rod i have to say it is difficult for me to recommend this exact model the seven foot six two piece to recommend it for anything i i don't like it for float it is too stiff i don't like it for jigging either the tip is too heavy because the guides are big and the rod is just too long for jigging on top of that this grip here will take a long time to get used to it uh, the blank is just a little bit too strong for regular crappy okay and at $60 I mean this rod doesn't have a single component that compares to the Diva Presso of the same price okay Diva Presso has genuine minima guides okay 
I mean, the rod handle here looks like a piece of art. The whole rod looks like a piece of art and it's even lighter. And if I compare it to the, you know, $20 Shakespeare, I can't see any advantage in this rod over the, the Shakespeare rod. I mean, the Shakespeare rod has a more comfortable handle, lighter tip, and you can enjoy, you know, catching any panfish uh, pretty much. So unfortunately, just like the Okumba of uh, uh, Abu Garcia catfish special with the, you know, incredible hype, uh, this rod was a little bit disappointing for me. Uh, that said, if you do catch bigger fish and you are really, you know, annoyed by this flimsy feeling, then yeah, I think uh, you can give this rod um, a look. And uh, yeah, I hope this uh, review helped you if uh, you are considering uh, purchasing that rod. Uh, if that's the case, uh, leave this video a thumbs up. If you want to see the reviews of uh, the remaining rod on my bench over there, make sure you're subscribed. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.